Starhopper 150 meter flight summary and Cargo Dragon splashdown. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It. Wow, what an evening. We had our first live stream here on What About It and a lot of people watched the SpaceX Starhopper 150 meter test flight with me happening in Boca Chica. Since it was my first ever live webcast and OBS, the program I used for recording, kept fighting me, I had some minor technical difficulties in the beginning. You stayed though and endured my rescue attempts until it got stable. Thank you for showing up. I'll definitely do some more streams in the future. What a wonderful way to hang out. And what a hop it was. After Monday's attempt, which ended in an abort after 0.8 seconds due to faulty igniters on the Raptor engine, expectations were high. An igniter on a rocket motor, by the way, basically is just a slightly different spark plug. So it was the typical engineer's nightmare, that one loose cable that prevented Monday's test. On Tuesday, around the same time as Monday's test, the Starhopper was sitting on the pad, awaiting that ignition command again. Wind gusts had been a concern prior to the launch, but even the weather had mercy and so everything was ready for another try. SpaceX, by the way, as always, did a beautiful job broadcasting multiple camera feeds to the public. If you consider that this is a very early prototype test, it's surprising every time that SpaceX gives us such great insights. So a big thank you goes out to the people at SpaceX for letting us in on what you're doing on such a regular basis. Then the countdown hit zero and this time the igniter did not let us down at all. Raptor had a good ignition and the engine lifted the hopper off the pad just fine. It's such a major achievement for SpaceX to have the first operational full flow staged combustion engine running and doing actual work. The methane exhaust was surprisingly clean compared to other rockets. Beautiful shock diamonds and very nice gimbal action to balance the Starhopper in flight. The RCS, by the way taken from the Falcon 9 inventory, worked great. It was a smooth ride. The hopper moved over as planned towards the landing pad and nicely throttled down for a very precise landing right in the middle of the typical SpaceX circle. Right after the Starhopper had landed, one of the RCS thrusters, or possibly an RCS nitrogen tank, wanted to do another hop as you can see here. Actually, SpaceX can consider themselves lucky that this did not happen mid-flight. It definitely could have caused problems. This way though, it didn't. Other than that, this was exactly what everyone hoped to see that evening. A perfectly executed hop. Not even a grass fire like on the last 25 meter hop test. SpaceX can put lots of check marks on their test list now. The most important goal of the test definitely was Raptor performance. And Raptor performed just the way it was supposed to. The gimbal did a fine job, the throttling worked perfectly, and the burn time of roughly 55 seconds showed once again that a full flow stage combustion engine can and will work in SpaceX's concepts. So it was a great success. Thank you very much SpaceX for making this happen and thank you everybody else on the live stream yesterday for joining in. It was a joy. But what about it? What will happen next on SpaceX's schedule now that Starhopper is history? When can we witness the next great step on the road to Mars? Fear not, the next big day is just around the corner. Elon tweeted today, August 29th, that SpaceX is aiming straight for the 20 km flight in October and an orbital attempt shortly thereafter. The Starship presentation got another date and it's safe to say that this will most likely be kept. It is going to be on September 28th. So about one month from now, Starship will be fully assembled by then. Fully means flight ready. Raptor is coming along very nicely too. Where the first 25 meter hop was done with the Raptor serial number 6, SpaceX is already getting ready to ship the serial number 10. So we're four generations further down the road. Furthermore, he said that Raptor is two to three months away from being ready for orbit. So if we take the worst case of three months, that would put an orbital flight attempt at the end of November to the beginning of December. Remember how I said in an earlier episode that Starship would go orbital this year? I keep saying it again. In recent times, SpaceX got a lot more realistic with their timelines. 
Also, there have been leaked pictures from inside the fence at SpaceX. As interesting as they are, I will not be showing them live on the episode out of respect for SpaceX. If SpaceX wanted us to see these engineering secrets, they would show them to us freely. If anyone at SpaceX is watching this, please keep in mind that the pictures got leaked by one person and that we very much appreciate the open development and the insights you're giving us freely. Keep up the great work. And as soon as Super Heavy is introduced, it's going to get crazy. When that will be is hard to say, but let me tell you, it's probably closer than you think. Most of the tech used on Super Heavy is already available. It's just a matter of writing the code to get the 31 Raptor engines to work as a team. That shouldn't be that hard though, as today's avionics are much better than for example the Russian N1's avionics, which sported 30 engines on its first stage and never made it into orbit. One of the reasons being that it was insanely difficult back then to control so many engines. So there are a lot of things to come in the next few months and I will make sure to cover them for you from now on even with live streams. The dragon has returned home. Due to lack of sleep from yesterday's stream, this will be a shorter episode, though there is one thing that is definitely worthy of the news and that is that the dragon has returned home. While we all waited for the Starhopper to do its final flight, the astronauts on the ISS were busy saying goodbye to a frequent visitor. While Soyuz had trouble docking to the ISS and needed two attempts recently, Dragon performed well and after exactly one month of staying docked to the ISS, after July 27th successful docking, the Dragon C-108.3 spacecraft was unberthed yesterday with the Canada arm. Any spacecraft is undocked or unberthed very carefully from the ISS. The risk of a thruster misfiring at higher speeds and a resulting crash with ISS would be extremely dangerous for all astronauts on board ISS. So speed limits are very slow within the vicinity of the station. Dragon performed three good departure burns and then did a 12 minute deorbit burn once it was at a big enough distance away from the station. Only 30 minutes after the deorbit burn, Dragon splashed down in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of California. This completed the third visit of the Dragon C-108 to the ISS, hence the point three in its full title. Next up in the commercial resupply services is CRS-19, currently scheduled for launch on December 4th from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral on board a Falcon 9 rocket. It's not completely clear yet, but it might be the booster B1056 carrying CRS-19 into orbit, as it already launched CRS-17 and 18. So you can already mark the date on your calendar, if you want to hang out with me and hopefully many others for an evening of SpaceX rocket excellence. So this wraps up today's episode of What About It. Will there be another Starship presentation delay until mid-September and did you watch the Hopper launch live? As always, tell me in the comments. And here we are again at the end of the episode saying a big thank you into the camera for our patrons, so thank you very much. Without your help, the show would simply be not possible and again we have more names for the list. Everyone, please welcome William Roch. It's great to have you with us and don't forget to visit us on the Discord server. Thank you for watching this episode of What About It. If you liked what you saw, please don't forget to subscribe and like as this helps me the most. Feel free to hit me up on my Patreon page so I can get additional help in doing more and better content as this gives me more time to focus on what I really love doing, to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. A thick thank you. And here we are again. Yeah, we, here we are. Due to lack of sleep, it's not complete yet. Complear. My name is Felix and I don't know what to say. <laughs> Due to lack of street, due to lack of stream. <laughs> Did you watch the Hopper live? <laughs>